We on, Julius? All right. I am right now just browning up brisket and short rib because we are going to do a Moroccan-style braise today because wifey hey. and I went to an orchard and we picked a bunch of apricots, cherries. Wifey made, look at this beautiful cherry pie that wifey made. All right, there's a beautiful cherry pie on the show today. Cherry crumble, if you will. Yup, and uh, so we're just preparing that whole business. But um, before we go any further into the episode, just wanna say, this one's dedicated to Sponto. RIP, the big homie. Um, very sad day yesterday in LA. We all found out Sponto passed away. Motorcycle accident. The details are online. Everybody posting. Um, I just want to say, personally, in all my interactions with homie, just a real stand-up dude and um, a titan of LA as my boy Ray Alba would say. Um, I don't think there are many people that are as tied to a city as Sponto was. Like the last person I could think of that is as tied to LA in the actual community, not just on billboards, not on TV shows and all that shit is Nipsey Hussle. Um, I really think if you live in LA and you participate in the culture, um, Sponto is a dude that really brought people together and um, you know you live out here the day after Thanksgiving is is the born and raised Sadie Hawkins dance and while in the last few years it became like a real influencer thing and Vogue covered it I was very happy for Sponto born and raised everybody but um, it really started off a community thing and it felt like when you came back home from college or you came back home from being away for a minute, there's that bar in your neighborhood, everybody meet up, you know, Christmas night and get fucked up or the day after Thanksgiving. I mean, Sponto really took that feeling and created this Sadie Hawkins thing, the born and raised dance. And um, beyond that, he's very active in the community for Native American rights. Um, I think he was really just a proponent and uh, a promoter of justice and living right. You know, like he made a lot of his own personal mistakes. He got in trouble, he beat cancer. But if you follow Sponto's journey and story, he's just a warrior, he's a survivor, and he's a really good dude that I felt always stood for something. And that's rare. I think that as streetwear has gone on and grown and become this thing that there's so much money to be made in, I think a lot less people were willing to attach a message to their brand and their product in the way that a lot of people started off in streetwear. And Sponto was one of the last really successful dudes that really stood for something and his brand reflected it. Um, I would just remember him as a community leader, an indispensable part of LA. And I think people are really going to miss this dude. Like, um, even when, Ka I would tell you, like, he was on some Uncle Paulie and Goodfellas shit. Like, if you had beef with somebody or somebody was beefing with you, like, you would kind of call Sponto just, like, settle it out. Like, yo, you cool with this dude? I'm not really trying to be that upset about it. Are you cool? You know, and Sponto really, if, if he called you, you picked up the phone. You know, and, and he had that ability to bring people together in L.A. And I don't really have too much else to say, but um, love you, dog. Everybody's going to fucking miss you. Um, it's whack to even, like, dedicate an episode of the pod, but I don't really know what else to do because you're not here. Love you, man. Sponto. Today, we also have another OG on the show. Crazy enough, I think this dude is also very much like Sponto, so I, I'm, I'm excited to talk to him when he gets here. Roy Choi is on the show today, and um, he's also another guy who just reps LA to the fullest, been here forever, and you got problems, you, you gotta get in touch with somebody, you gotta do something, call fucking, call Roy Choi, you know? Um, 
We're going to try to get into the food now. I have uh, been boiling this water over here. We're going to use the Dutch oven in place of a tagine. Um, I'm a little behind today, you know, it's a crazy day, a lot of stuff going on. I'm mincing some ginger. Um, you're gonna see me cooking and working in the background here. Um, really, this is gonna be ginger, garlic, dates. Um, I got some oxtail over here as well. Uh, I'm gonna fry up these onions for a second first, and then we'll bring in the meats, because you guys know I like to get my onions browned up. So we'll brown some onions, we'll bring in the aromatics, we're gonna stew it, and halfway the episode, halfway through the episode when Roy gets here, we will have a beautiful Dutch oven, short rib, oxtail, brisket, apricot, tagine. So I'm excited, this is a good recipe, it's a, it's a legendary guest. Um, we're gonna do it right today. What's, what's going on in the news, babe? What, what are in our segments today that we're going to talk about? Well, shit. <laughs> um, it's not really news, but I feel like we had a laugh about this. We were having dinner last night. Oh, at, my God. Yes. At Steakhouse. This is a Beverly good segue. Hills. I like this. I like this. I like <laughs> this. We're bringing some lightheartedness. Yes, we were having I like dinner this. last night, um, just having like a little date night in Beverly Hills. <laughs> at a steakhouse, and this is an a la carte steakhouse, so they bring around, you know, the little, what do you call that? The the prime rib cart. Yeah, the prime rib cart. So they bring around the prime rib cart, and they're like cutting your meat at your table. That's the kind of Lowry's. steakhouse this is. Lowry's. Like, yeah. We're gonna throw it under the bus, very, Lowry's. Ve very known for their seasoning salt. Lowry seasoning yeah. salt. Yeah. Classic, classic MSG salt. Most American seasoning salt I could think of. And so we're sitting at this, beautiful table in the back we have like a perfect view of the room it's like the best table in the house and we see a family walk in and they sit in the booth next to us they had their dog with them a bitch on fries it was a bitch on fries a bichon frise yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I thought it was a fries. bitch on fries <laughs> it's a bichon frise yeah yeah i don't know that's how i say it but i could just be like it's cool you, you know it you you spent some time in france with some french people bichon frise. so maybe you just um, know better but yeah so they come in with their dog and i don't that was just like the funniest shit in the world there was a me. dog in the fucking steakhouse and <laughs> you, you literally she turned to me you just turn and go babe there's a dog in the steakhouse <laughs> <laughs> because it's like all a cart shit like they're cutting your meat at your table yeah and i was just like the dog is very close to the meat that is very close like that's for everybody it's an open that's cart. not just your meal like that is that is a lot of people's meal. Like they yeah. have the spinach, they have the corn, they have the fucking Yorkshire pudding. Like it's all in the little cart. And I'm like, there's dog hairs like flying around. There's a dog in the fucking steakhouse. And I'm not trying to like throw anyone under the bus cause I'm the biggest fan of this woman. Yeah. I, I wasn't mad I'm at all. I'm her biggest fan. It was foul. I'm but, not mad. I'm just shocked. I loved it. And I'm a little impressed. Yeah. 24 hours later, I'm, I'm impressed. But the woman, <laughs> I'm about With to write dog. a children's book called There's a Dog in the Steakhouse. Can I say who it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say who it was. The woman with her dog was Kathy Hilton. Yeah. Legendary big cat. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, this is next level VIP status but to bring a dog I, in like, the steakhouse. Even like, I, the utmost respect, like, love you, legendary woman. I just couldn't help but You like, respect Wood we and legendary women. We were in earshot of her. She could definitely hear us talking shit. I needed to talk that shit though. Yeah. Like our waiter came and I was like, yo, can I bring my dog? Like what's, yeah. the, what's the deal with the dog policy? Kathy Hilton heard us asking mad questions <laughs> and laughing and talking mad shit about a dog in the steakhouse. But Kathy Hilton, if you are a separate bedroom <laughs> listener you. fan, just want you to know that we fully support what you're doing like that level of stature yeah to bring the bitch on fries into lowry's is like next level yeah like would you like a side no i'm good i got my dog do you think she orders for the dog like do you because there is and what we came to find out was at the end of our meal they offered us they were like do you want to are you vip status here and we were like no and they were like do you want to be yeah there's like a vip <laughs> card <laughs> no but i was like is that how you get to bring your dog in 
I Does think the VIP Lowry's card include dog entry and doggy meal. And the dude said to us, he's like, people bring their dogs up in here. Yeah, it happens regularly. Yeah, apparently so. it's a thing to do is to bring your dog know, to man. Lowry's. I don't know, man. If you have a dog, bring it to Lowry's. I think we're going to try to bring one of the Doberman there. We're definitely bringing Killa there. Mr. Chow will eat everybody. Yeah. But Killa, Killa's going to Lowry's. That's, yeah. that's going to be the ill children's book. Killa goes to Lowry's. Mm -hmm. Part of the There's a Dog in the Steakhouse series yeah. of children's books. That's the second book. There's a dog yeah. in the, the steakhouse. Part two, Killer Goes to Lowry's. Yeah. So, yeah, um, breaking news, there's a dog in the steakhouse. Yeah. There's also a stroller in the house. So, Guys. I don't know if Julius wants to zoom in over there. Thank you to Raph Thank and Christina. Thank you to Raph and Christina who got us the stroller off of our registry, which is insane. And I really just had it there as a placeholder to remind myself, like, this is the one that you want. I didn't, I was like not expecting anyone to buy the whole stroller. So Shouts to my you long time. You're so fucking sweet. Shouts um, to my long time best friend, attorney, yeah. Rafael Martinez from picking up rat shit. Raph and Christina were two of three people at our wedding. Yeah. That weren't family. It was Raph, Christina, and Elena was the yeah. only people not blood related at the wedding. Yeah. Love you guys. We love you um, guys. I, st I still remember when me and Raph were broke out of law school and we were fighting to see who would get to apply for a job at Brooklyn Industries because we both saw that they were hiring like a person to fold t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I'm apply there. And he's like, bro, I'm applying there. And I was like, what bro, like, well, who gets to apply here? I think we might've played like a basketball game one-on-one -on -one to see who got to go. Why didn't you both apply, apply? and see who got the job? Uh, I think that's what we did end up doing and neither of us got it which is crazy. Really? Like we didn't even get hired at Brooklyn Industries. Well, I know you can't fold a t-shirt, so. I, I can't. <laughs> no hater I can't. shade. I can't. I no can't. hater shade. No like, hater shade, just laughing at your man for being unable to fold a t-shirt. It's kind of a flex, babe. Fair enough. Like yeah. not being able to fold a t-shirt. Yeah. Cause I'm like, wow, you really don't yeah. know. Honestly, my mom yelled at my dad about dropping his socks everywhere in the house when I was around 13. Mm -hmm. And I remember the coldest most foul shit my dad has ever said in his life. He goes, you think I got married to wash my own shirt and pick up my own socks? And I was like, damn, son, damn. Yeah. Damn, one day I'm gonna repeat this to a therapist and they're gonna feel really bad for the way I grew up. <laughs> um, I was gonna get whole almonds. All we got is these sliced almonds. My bad. There's almonds in here, it's That's cool. That's my bad. It's cool, it's cool. We're gonna have bits of almond, it's fine. I love it. You know what we do have? We have pistachios. You're putting those in there? Honey roasted pistachios? Yeah, wow. why not? Like Middle Eastern food, they'd be throwing pistachios up That's in anything. Fine. Can I have the rest of them? Yeah, for That's sure. That's fire. Here you go. Here you go, babe. Thanks. These wonderful, are so good. wonderful. This is what we'll be doing on the show. I'm also here gonna drop in some slices of lemon here. All right? Some slices of lemon. So we got nuts going, we got onions going. We got lemon searing. This is very delicious what's going on in this pot. Mm. I'm gonna sit this meat just on top as the lemons kinda, I mean, as the onions get brown. What, what else is in the news? Okay. This I just wanna talk about. The Barbie movie. Oh. Marketing team. Oh. Made a Barbie Malibu Dreamhouse Airbnb. I have to say, the Malibu. Barbie marketing's been strong. Like, I have it's no interest so in this strong. film, but Every it's strong. Every brand has a collab with Barbie. Yep. I've seen every bitch on the internet is wearing some, like, Barbie merch. Yeah. Can I say Everyone's this? What I love about the Barbie marketing is I have never seen a blockbuster mainstream film dive this head first into foot fetish like yeah. the barbie poster is straight up like foot out of a heel mm -hmm. you know the dua lipa song teaser had a lot of foot i have a theory though margot robbie was in once upon a time in hollywood with a notorious foot fetish director yeah do we think our neighbor turned, <laughs> our neighbor do we think he turned her out like on the feet shit and she's i think like, he absolutely did and she's just it's her influence on this movie she's like let's do feet I think Tarantino absolutely turned her out, put her onto the foot game, and now it's going to become a staple of Margot Robbie's game. And that is just 
that's great for everybody. Honestly, more foot marketing, we're here for it. Yeah. This so, is a foot pod. I don't know exactly how it works with this Airbnb. Yeah. Because it says it's zero dollars a night. It's zero dollars a night? Yeah, so I don't know if this is like a first come first serve basis. Oh. Um, like win a night in the Barbie crib? Yeah. I don't know. But I have been seeing all over the internet because the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer come out the same day. Yes, there have been some good memes. That. I, it, yo, this is a foul name to say out loud, but I have to say the number one meme account on the internet right now is Grand, Grand Wizard Chat N Word. That's the best account. Okay, I didn't come up with the name. It is That's funny. his name. It's the best account right now. Yeah. That dude had really fire memes about Oppenheimer Barbie going head to head in theaters. Luckily, we don't have to choose which one because we AMC Stubbs members. <laughs> we can see both. See both. See both. We can see both in the same day. Yup. And not have to pay. Yup. My new health hack at the AMC is the chocolate dip, the skinny dipped almonds. Yeah, fire. If you notice, I lost like eight ounces this week. If you see me with eight ounces of fat less, it's because I ate the skinny dipped almonds instead of a giant caramel fucking popcorn this week. Yeah. Wifey stopped me. She was like, put that caramel popcorn down. Don't do it. Don't do it. So skinny dipped almonds. Back. It's my new shit. I'm proud of you though. Thank we you. went to, we had a big eating day yesterday. I didn't eat, yo, I didn't even eat the bread at Lowry's. I didn't even eat the Yorkshire pudding at Lowry's. First, we went to Bloodsoe's. Yeah, yo, yeah, shout out Bloodsoe's. Blood Grand Toes. opening, Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. You didn't even touch a carb there. Nope. Completely bypassed the mac and cheese, which is crazy. Yep. I ate the whole thing. Um, yeah, and then when we went to Lowry's, no bread, no Yorkshire pudding. Fucking proud of you. Just cutting carbs. You're keto as fuck yesterday. You're in ketosis. I'm in ketosis. You're in ketosis right I'm now. I'm absolutely, you can see in my face I'm in ketosis. Yeah, I can see you're in ketosis. Yup. Wild. This man is skinny. Skinty. Oh, this is good news. Elon Musk and Oh yeah, Mark that's good news. Are gonna fight, I guess. Dana White. Yup. Is putting it on. I would love to go. I hope that I have this baby at the time in which the fight has already been like tickets go on sale yeah yeah who do you guys have elon or mark zuckerberg i'm Julius going elon, elon. So i feel elon? like elon but also like zuckerberg got that like he looks a little special you know what i'm saying like he may have like special strength i don't know who i have because i can make arguments for both yeah it's tough who do i want to see win yeah i kind of want to see Mark Zuckerberg win because Ooh. I know the ego blow will be harder for Elon Ooh. if he loses. Ooh, see, I'm team Elon. I don't Elon. necessarily like one or the other better. I just think it would be harder for Elon to come back from that. I... Mark Zuckerberg would be like, just still living his normal life. Yeah, I feel like Mark Zuckerberg will not take it as hard, mm -hmm. you know? Damn, I'm so goofy. I had boiled water here ready to go and I put tap water in, but I'm gonna get this boiled water and I'm all distracted. Um, but yeah, I do think like Elon, I, I prefer Elon Musk to Mark Zuckerberg. Interesting. Yeah, I just like him more. Hmm. Where does Jeff Bezos fit in your... <laughs> I would in, say in your ranking of billionaires, I would do you say, like the most to least. Yeah, billionaire rankings. I'm probably going Elon first because he's a troll and he's kind of funny to me. Okay. And uh, so I would go Elon. When <laughs> also is Shane Smith still a billionaire? Because that's my favorite billionaire. Let me look that up. I gotta say, was he a billionaire? He had billionaire status. I think Shane got a B. I mean, I went to his house and Shane literally has his own water, and he was like. I have my own aquifer. He had his own like grapevines. I was like, this feels like billionaire activity. There's like abalone in the wall. Well, so, not that like Google, when you Google someone's um, 
net worth. I don't think that's ever correct. <laughs> yeah. But it says fifty million. Fifty million. I'm I'm sure that he was, um, his net worth was like probably at, at one a billion point. when he had when before the vice thing happened. Yeah, before the bankruptcy. Because I'm sure whatever it was evaluated at, he probably had stock in that, and that was how you equate that. But yeah. I would say rich, number though. one, my he favorite rich. billionaire, Shane Smith. <laughs> Shane okay. Smith, number one. Okay. Then I have seen Abramovich's boat. That is a sick boat. He's supposedly not like the nicest guy, but I enjoyed partying on his boat. I would say Abramovich is my number two billionaire. Okay. I, I just, I want to keep it like to the billionaires we all know. We all know. Okay. So okay. I think we're just talking about the three. That's like Elon, okay. Mark, I'm and going Bezos. Elon, I'm going Elon, Bezos. Zuckerberg. That's my exact ranking, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Elon, I think, is hilarious on the internet. Like, he always puts his foot in his mouth, and, like, the whole Grimes thing is the always going to be funny to me. I'm going Bezos second, but Bezos post-divorce in the new era with yeah. the girl who he, he has, like, a wooden statue of on his boat. Yeah, that's fire. Um, I just, I can't get enough of it. I think it's hilarious. They're both on like HGC and like they're both bulked the fuck up. Like this girl could kick the shit out of you. You just see her like walking around like China from the WWE. Um, Honestly, with that much money and it's just like hilarious shit for the streets, he needs to release the sex tape. I feel like the Bezos sex tape would be straight comedy. Like I feel like she will release it. There was a whole thing where her, so Lawrence has released or like, fed to TMZ text messages yeah. between them, like very intimate kind of sexy messages or something where he Ooh, was like, I can't spicy. get enough of you, baby. Yeah. So I feel like she would leak the sex tape. And I actually fuck with her for that. Mm -hmm. We're due for like another round of celebrity sex tapes. We are. And I think the Bezos, it's been a while. Uh, the Bezos joint is the one. What's her name again? Lauren Sanchez. Yeah. Shouts to Lauren Sanchez. She like, the CEO Larza Pippen out here. Yeah. And she was um she was married to Patrick Whitesell. Yes. Who's like very connected in Hollywood. Yeah. So she's like in the Hollywood Big world agent. and like pulling Jeff Bezos in. Yeah. Which I think we're in for an interesting ride. She's really upgrading his life. She's taking him on a journey I don't think he thought he was going on. Yeah. And I'm, shout out to his ex-wife, who's like... It's crushing. She got her bees, and I think she's dating um, a teacher, maybe like middle school or elementary school teacher, like science teacher. Oh, I wow. could be wrong. It could, like, I know he's like in education, but adorable and cute. I love it for everyone. I think everyone wins. They're all happy. They did their bids. They got their money. Yeah, everyone's happy. You know, it'll never happen with us, but... I'm happy no. for them. No. It would never. It would never. Mac I think her name's Mackenzie Bezos. Yeah. I would have killed him. You know what I mean? Like, she took it on the chin like a champ. Yeah, she got her bread, but still, she got dropped off. She built that man's business with him. Yeah. And he was like, I like this bodybuilder bitch. But yo, props to Bezos. You know, most people get on and get a white girl. He got on and like was like, I'm going Sanchez. I was like, all right. Fuck with that, Bezos. Yeah, switch it up. It's interesting. You just want what you don't have. Yeah. I don't know. Life is crazy, man. It is. All right. Let's put some cumin in here. So what is in this right now is... We have onions, we have garlic, we have minced ginger, mm. all right? Um, I would have liked to toast this cumin, but it's fine. The cumin's going in, it's gonna get some cinnamon. Um, there's apricots in there, there's Italian parsley in there. Um, we're gonna finish with garbanzo beans when it reduces, here's some cinnamon for that. Oh, a little cinnamon. Stu, you guys know I always do a little bit of sugar, agave, bang. Uh, let's see 
here. Salt. Where are my pink salt at? Oh, good. That Kirkland pink salt has lasted literally years. Yeah, it's huge. <clears throat> Just a little more salt. All right. Oh, that is wonderful. That's your recipe. Oh, okay. So it's got dates in there too. I put oh. some dates, apricots, parsley, cumin seeds, cinnamon, agave, garlic, ginger, oxtail, brisket, and short rib all in there. So we will be eating this towards the end of the episode with Roy. We also have pie. But that'll be fun. We'll sit down with Roy. We're going to chop it up. And then we will eat the food as a last portion. But uh, anything. Did we miss anything else in news? Any shows we were going to talk about? Any move? Oh, we saw the Jennifer Lawrence movie. Yeah, we saw No Hard Feelings. I loved I it. I fucked with it. I thought it was so funny. Offensive humor is back, baby. J-Law's back. We're I making, fuck with J-Law. <laughs> we're making politically uncorrect jokes again. Um... Thank fucking God. And she's killing it in that. She's killing. She's so good. Honestly, I grew up a Julia Roberts fan. And I have to say, I think Jennifer Lawrence is this generation's Julia Roberts. I agree. Updated. She has a different brand of woman and feminism. She's a bit of a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Unhinged. This movie was like... I think Mystic Pizza has a cleaner narrative. Perhaps like better directed mystic pizza but this is a funnier version it's both like seaside town it's a classist comedy um yeah same same elements like Sa threaded in there yes yeah, similar world in 2023 with the gentrification story it's is ill like i really loved no hard feelings jennifer lawrence 2023 mystic pizza feeling it i loved it um Oh, in a show that we started watching, we fell off, totally forgot, that I would recommend Silo. Yes. Such a good sci-fi. Really, really interesting. Um, I won't say much. I don't want to spoil it for you. But if you're looking for a good show to watch, it's, it's a sci-fi. I think it's on Apple TV. Apple TV. It's, it's kind of the first Apple TV show I've watched since yeah. trying to watch Ted Lasso, which Rashida was like Rashida Jones fine. is in it. She's yes. great. Um fire show so we're gonna get back into it and probably finish it yeah we're gonna finish silo the interesting thing though i'm i'm gonna finish i'm a virgo for sure but mm -hmm. it's like every show right now it's good but it's not as good as watching old episodes of curbed yeah. we just keep we're, we're in, in the curb pocket. season right now yeah our mindset is very larry david yeah everything is funny like we'll be out we're reciting inside jokes from Curb Your Enthusiasm to each other and no one it's gets it. Good. We just keep asking everybody if they respect Wood. They don't know what we're talking about. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, man. That's Cur vibe. Curb is my therapist right now because like mm. saving money for baby so I'm not doing therapy. Curb is my therapy. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a similar situation. Do you feel connected to Larry David? I do. I mean, I would say, well, let me ask you. I feel like, well, do you think I'm as insane? No. Yeah. I think that you definitely, but I think this is the thing with Larry David. We, everything he says is stuff that like, we're all thinking, but we just would never say because we have more social intelligence, but yeah. he just doesn't give a fuck. Like he's going to say some shit that I'm like, wow, I don't. That's wild. I'm very rules based, so I relate to Larry because I'm very like, I respect you and I'm gonna live by the code. So I'm gonna expect you to operate by the code. Yeah, but you have and a line. And once you cross that line, you do have Larry in you. Yeah, once like, they cross a line, I'm a- I'm like, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, that's crazy you said that. But I don't yeah. think it's a bad thing. No, I think a lot of times people, especially my friends around me are like, yo, you're not wrong, but I maybe wouldn't have said that. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, just cause like, it's not that important. It hurt that person's feelings. But my thing is, is like, I think in my position, especially, especially working with friends, mm -hmm. boundaries are so important. And it's like, yeah. I think a lot of my friends are always like, yo, just like bite the bullet. You take the L, let that person just do what they're doing. And I'm like, 
I'm kind of at the point of my life and career where I'm like, bro, I want to be the best I can be, and like you're holding me back, and I can't, I can't be dealing with this shit. So that's when I go, Larry. Yeah, he'd be saying wild shit sometimes. Also, shout out to Max Chow, who is gonna name our child and one of the options he threw out, which you just reminded me when you said, I'm not, I'm not wrong. He said, right. And wrong. <laughs> right and wrong. And <laughs> wrong. <laughs> middle, 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 middle name and symbol. Yup. So shout out Max Chow. But I fuck with Larry. Sometimes socially in your life, you just gotta take out the trash. Ooh. You gotta take out the trash. You gotta keep your side of the street clean, Keep folks. your side of the street clean. <laughs> when there's one, yeah. the parents can double team the kid. Yeah. He's yeah. like, when it's two, it's like one-on-one. -on -one. When it's three, it's a yeah. fast break. You're just yeah. always getting smoked, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, having, being an only child parent, like, uh, I love it. It's the best. Yeah. Cause Were they you get rolled only? up the whole time. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I, I have a younger sister. Which, okay. She was like six years younger than me, but. She's cool. She's smart as fuck. She was everything. She turned into everything I was supposed to be. Yeah. But like, we're just we were just so far apart in like critical ages that yeah. You know, we never really six years is a lot when you're young. It is. Yeah. 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 It's too much to like have the same friends yeah. or be doing the same stuff. She she was what you were supposed to be, but that's because your parents didn't have the vision. They didn't, they didn't see the, the whole quad. They didn't see, <laughs> yeah. they didn't see the vision. Yeah. Now they see the vision and take the credit for it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They're like, no, no, we always believed yeah. in you. We always knew this. Yo, that's that's when you know you got your pops though, because my dad will be at parties and I'll hear him out the side of my uh -huh. ear being proud telling a story and I'm like, all right, cool. You you won't tell me, yeah. but you will brag to other people. I'm like, all right, word, yeah. Yeah. word. I'm glad, I'm glad you're satisfied with your work, sir. Yes. But that's, that's <laughs> the real telltale sign. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. your parents are bragging to you about to other people, yeah. they're yeah. never gonna do but, it to uh, you. But in the Asian, I mean, you're probably getting to know like the whole Asian innuendo. Yeah. It's like, it's, partly they're proud, but a, a, a lot of it is still about them. Okay. That so is it, is it like it, a pride they, thing? They could stick it back to their friends that they couldn't stick it to back then. Yeah. So they, just, they could do it now. Yeah, now they can do yeah. it. They're dunking Now they're like, yeah, they're by the way. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we were in our 20s and their yeah. kids is like consultants kids, or yeah, lawyers. Yeah. 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 working at Anderson or yeah. whatever, you know. And they're um, like, how's your kid? And they're like, jail. Yeah, your dad and my dad was just getting dunked on. Like, oh, he's be quiet. And then I've seen your dad on TV and, you know, he seems like a really proud guy. My dad's the same thing. Yeah. He likes to talk shit. He likes to be the boss. And he couldn't do it when I was younger because I didn't have, you know, all the other kids are going to Harvard or working yeah. at, you know, um, major firms. And But now he's dunking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, his son, was, his son was active in the riots, though. Yeah, Even yeah. back then, you know, yeah. he was active in the riots. Yeah. So it's good. You was doing your thing. But, yo, I'm going to do a proper introduction because this is, this is my OG. This is my big bro, you know, like. You got, you, when you Asian, you really gotta give the respect to the older homies. And uh, Roy, definitely, mm -hmm. big bro. A yeah. lot of love, man. Thank like you. when I first came out to LA, you put me onto a lot of stuff. And yeah. you was reminding me, our first appearance together was Wong's World, like 11 years ago, yeah. East LA. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you always been one of the, the, the first Asian homies repping like street culture in America, you know, yeah. and like, you always had the solidarity with the Mexican community, black community, and that's something I think we always had in common. Yeah. Where we, we really did enjoy being American. Mm -hmm. And like we engaged the American wilderness and and was not just siloed. So legend in the house today uh, mm -hmm. and, and also on a on a somber day, you know, uh, that we talked about on the cooking show, you know, Sponto passing, R. I. P. Yeah. The biggest I mean, we're right in the thick of it just happened yesterday. You know, yeah. So. And um, we're, in, we're in some born and raised right now. I don't know what camera I'm fucking looking at. Yeah, no, no, yeah. he got you. He got all the yeah, dramatic yeah, yeah. angles, you know. But, but yeah, like, yeah, shout out to Sponsor. Honestly, man, I, I like not to put you on the spot, and, and if you want to pass on it, it's all good. But I really think about you, Sponto, Nipsey Hustle as dudes that are synonymous, ubiquitous with LA. And, and it's just like, you know, when you're coming from New York out here, mm -hmm. I, I remember it was always like, you were one of three people to call like yo can you help me plug me in like yada 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 and like how does it feel for you to see a legend and a homie like sponto you know like leave the I building mean, yeah i'm ready to talk about sponto i, I mean I, I was thinking about on the drive here like we could talk about him this yeah. whole podcast um uh 
you know, it's crazy you mentioned those three people, like myself included, like two of them are gone now. Um, I was thinking back on the time actually the three of us were together. Yeah. You know, it was Christmas, like, it must have been a year or two before the pandemic, so it must have been like Christmas 18 or 17, but we were all kicking it together. And um, man, uh, Spanto, Spanto is a legend. You know, he's not just a legend in streetwear, but he's a legend on the streets of Los Angeles. Venice. You know, yeah. Yeah, from Venice, you know, um, here in LA compared to the East Coast, you know, we, we're built on neighborhoods, we're built on reputation, you know, uh, you know your word, and your reputation mean a lot here in the city. You know who you are, how you how you hold yourself, um, how you interact, and how you communicate with people, and um, it's kind of like what your resume is. You know, like mm -hmm. we in LA, we kind of have a resume. You know, compared to like other cities where you could kind of you could kind of reinvent yourself in many different ways or come out of nowhere in many cities. You know, not that they're any less you know uh, hard or important or anything like that. It's just LA. You know, LA, you can go back and check if someone's fronting. Yeah, you, know, you like can check if someone's the car lying. facts. Yeah, yeah, you could share the car. You could check the car facts. Yeah. exactly. And um, that's a big part of our city. And um, we got that in know. New York too. Just <laughs> you do. <laughs> we got the car facts. No, but the, no. Yeah, I yeah. just gotta say that to say that. But no, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. So that you know, Sponto is someone where his car facts, you know, uh, checks out all the way. And yeah. so, uh, you know, Venice is a neighborhood that um, back in the '90s. Um, you know, all the way back, not just in gang, gang situations, but also in culture, skateboarding, music, punk rock, everything shaped the city, you know, it was a big part of the city. It's as, as much as like New Yorkers talk about the Lower East Side or, you yeah. know, um, Alphabet City or CBGBs, or all those things, right? Yeah. Or the Bronx or anything, that's Venice to a lot of the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, not only was he a part of that from the beginning and was born into that and raised into that into generations and veterano just generations but also he became a champion in in um how the city changed you know yeah. because venice used to be a place that no you know nobody was investing in right yeah. and it was just artists and bohemians and gangsters yeah. and you know skaters and then um, somewhere in the mid 2000s, real estate developers got a hold of it. Yeah, have a kitty happen. Yeah. yeah. And so that was happening, you know, it happens just like you hear the news of Sponsor passing away. It happens without any warning. And then so um, in many cases in those situations, as you know, you have no one that can really stand up for you because us as minorities or us as people, working class people, you know, usually don't have a voice in what happens in change. And so, um, you know, he stood up and used his brand to like, you know. You yeah, know, that was the thing too that crazy. really brought me closer with Sponto was when he would go to Standing Rock uh -huh. and he would fight for Native American yeah. rights and he was fighting against the pipeline. Yeah. Mm. I was like, yo, that's my dog. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't really participate in the born and raised streetwear as much because mm -hmm. I'm not from here. So I wasn't yeah. going to rock it. I wasn't going to yeah. fake the funk. But as a person, I would always see him around. We started to hang out and I saw him like, go do the standing rock thing yeah and that's when i got the most respect for him and yeah. he's kept it up it wasn't just like no and a, a lot of that was also thing, his own know? personal journey of finding his own native roots again yeah you know what i mean like um you know you know i'm not speaking for him but i'm just saying that like you know i think he grew up you know in a broken household yeah. right with his with his father and mother and but um you know even for me like growing up korean american here in this city you don't really attach yourself to the motherland because you you're navigating what's happening here yeah. so you become like you were uh starting off at the beginning you become american you become from la so it's like you're figuring things out on your own you know and um i think he was just figuring himself out as like a chicano you know gangster from yeah. from venice but then later on it's community like going leader. back community yeah. leader. but then it's going back and figuring out you know his own roots and that yeah. i think a lot of that started with the standing rock yeah you know? and, and it's grown into his latest collab with levi's with the uh um the apache nation you know? yeah I, I always have the most respect for dudes like sponto mm -hmm. and they're the people that i think we need to hear more stories about yeah. like i hope that as he's passing the one positive that could come from him passing is that more people outside of la are going to hear what this dude is about because yes. he's an inspiration organizing community wise yeah and like 
he is a gangster from Venice that created a great business. And yeah. for me, like, I looked up to the dude in Taiwan. There's a famous gangster named Dry Duck. <clears throat> and Dry Duck pulled off one of the toughest hits ever, and he got money from the government. Mm -hmm. But instead of going back and in the same life, he got traders off the Hong Kong Stock Exchange mm -hmm. to manage the bread and got the bread way up mm -hmm. and started buying real estate, bought up whole districts of Taiwan, mm -hmm. owned all the nightlife. Like, dudes like that. His name was Dry Duck? Dry what? Duck. They called him Dry Duck because he can't swim. Yeah. That's a fucking ill ass dude, name. That's, 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 name. that's an ill, ill name, name, dude. Ill ass gangster. You know? <laughs> yeah, the, I have yeah. the most respect. Yo, the yeah. Taiwanese gangster nicknames is is real good. Yeah, real you good. Do you know somebody? What is it? Fruit. Oh, turtle? Yeah, turtle I know fruit? a dude named Fruit Turtle. Fruit so turtle. And then there's a chicken rice. Because every day in middle school, yeah, you could pick the is, meal, and he always picked chicken rice. That's a good name. So too. G2A fan, chicken rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the dude was named Screwdriver, because you know why. Like, yeah. that's his weapon. It was a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean... It's like I, some I, old outsider shit. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They like, still like, like that out yeah, there. Yeah, like research, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Shouts to Gui Gui. Shouts to, you know, G2A fan. My guys out there. You know? And then uh, there's there's one dude, Lao Bai, like old white, just because he don't tan. And wow. He's just dumb white, so like, yeah, you old white. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's cool. Yeah. Lil, like my dad's homie mm -hmm. that rolled with him, his name was Lil Black, Xiao Hei. So it was uh, just, they just name you based on how you look or mm -hmm. like what you eat. Very and, matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I love, I love those dudes, man. And, and Spont, I do hope somebody close to him tells the story, you know, like, I know he was talking to like Ian Edelman for a minute mm. about doing a show, and I, I talked to Sponto a lot during the pandemic about it. But, yeah, you know. I mean, what you're touching on is like um, sometimes it takes a, a death or a moment for thing because Sponto and I shared um, a very similar situation in that we were huge in our own city and in the underground. Yeah. But like sometimes, like I'm not network like you are. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes like <laughs> you know, Hollywood don't see yeah, me, you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. they don't understand yeah. the level of street food or influence um, that goes on. Or like sometimes like people like I was seeing some of the news media, they're just picking up on Sponto now, you know, yeah. and, yeah. you know, anyone with a brain would have known until now, you know, yeah. so, so but sometimes it takes that moment. But. What you're well, I checked is, the news like almost 12 yeah. hours yet after yesterday, nothing online. Yeah, no exactly, news online. Right? I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all will report a dead person in Hollywood yeah. this, in a movie or something, but this dude literally held the city together. Held it together in yeah. a lot of and ways. And it's gonna, it's gonna avalanche to where they're gonna start to hear how powerful he was, and then they're gonna like go down their research mm. like rabbit hole, and then yeah. then pull it back out which i ain't even mad i'm happy no, to see it might be good. I, I, like yeah. i think that the one positive that can come when somebody passes too young yeah. is that other homies around feel a responsibility to carry his yeah. message on yeah and i think you know you know, death just has a way of getting people to realize the truth yeah. of things mm -hmm. and it's sometimes when you're doing like the good work like the leadership work it doesn't get really noticed when you're alive sometimes you know yeah. yeah um you look at a lot of the people that are hoisted as heroes they were villains in the past right when they were alive so because yeah. we live crabs in a barrel yeah you know like when you come from where you came from responto mm -hmm. is crabs in a barrel mm -hmm. but it's sometimes it's only death that gets people to let the shit yeah just go mm -hmm. and then the influence that he had on the younger generation by really evolving like chicano culture fashion street culture los angeles gang culture turning it into something positive like he's got a whole generation of kids that are in high school right now that that fuck with born and raised right that yeah. have been influenced by mm -hmm. that you know it might spawn the next generation of it you know so we'll see yeah, yeah. but i just i just want people yeah. watching to know like probably the most important current figure in like street culture in la right now you know yeah sponto and he, he reminded me a lot of like how my homie aaron bondaroff is in New York, you know, uh -huh. downtown Dawn, Aaron, yeah. hiding out in Miami <laughs> now. But like, you know, Aaron, Aaron held, held down a lot of shit, held people together. And yeah. These dudes are important, you know? Yeah. These dudes in the community that, like you said, don't get mainstream coverage. Yeah. They don't flip over because the people running those news channels or shows, they don't need community because they rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, this is a working class thing. It's, it's a street thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. People, people that need community will hold it together. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. 
I mean, like, uh, what, what you been up to, though? Man, I haven't seen you. I, I ran into you on Larchmont, bro. Know, what are the odds you thought both of us would be on Larchmont I one know, day? I, like, I was there for a meeting. I was there. Yeah, I was there for a meeting. Yeah. Was there for a meeting. And both of us like, oh, shit, yeah. they got like, you, too. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you for a minute. Um, That's the Stepford uh, wife block. Yeah. It yeah. is. I'd be doing Pilates on Larchmont. Oh, yeah, you do the Pilates there. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That's like when he's like, I'll pick you up. I'm like, you're not coming over here. Because, like, yo, I drop her off at Pilates, and then I'm like, I might as well just do the meeting here because yeah. I'm already out I'm gonna wait for her to finish Pilates I know then, Pilates are hard right they, it looks mad easy because of the strings but yeah. it's it, well, it you, seems she teachers pet up in there. Oh, she's yeah. she's out like, there like oh, I have no core. Oh. I have no core. Looks well, good for core. He I have no core. Yeah. yeah. And like his trainer will yeah. tell me all the time when he's here. He's like, get him to do Pilates. Uh, yeah. Like it's It'll so good. help your boxing for your core. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it helps a lot. Yeah. Like for real. Like I feel I feel my fupa like crazy tight coming out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Straight up. She be doing crazy wild shit with her legs and Pilates like shit you only see on a pole. Yeah. Yeah. That's the pipeline. It's like pole and then Pilates. Yeah, <laughs> then yeah, Pilates. yeah, yeah. It's the retired yeah. stripper work. Then yoga. Is. yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what have I been up to? I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pretty private person to begin with, so I keep a pretty low profile. I uh, work on a lot of things um, quietly behind the scenes. You know, I still run restaurants, the trucks. Yeah, you got the Vegas um, joint. Uh, working on a new book right now. Um, I had a 10 year writer, writer's block between books. Yeah. I didn't go as fast as you did from your first book to your second book. Um, Yo, it took I only me 10 did years. that though because my agent sold me into it. You know, oh, really? you know what happened was with the second book, I wasn't ready. Yeah. It was my agent was like, yo, your shit's hot right now. We yeah. got to sell the second book right now. It mm. sold me into the book. And, yo, much respect, Mark Gerald. He did the uh, right thing because yeah. we broke bread. But then I was like, fuck, what the fuck am I writing for this book? Yeah. And it was really just like, a continuation of Fresh Out of the Bow. Yeah. Same shit. With just, with just different vignettes and different stories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Time in China. I love that book. Mm -hmm. I think I got good as a writer. But no, it's like, I do think you need like 10 years between books. Mm. Oh, well, that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. What yeah. I so did. what's the new book about? Uh, it's going to be a cookbook. Uh, okay. Just straight up cookbook. But it's going to be actually, I think you'll appreciate it. I, be, I thought long and hard about it. And um, I, I, I feel like it's going to be my towel of Jeet Kune Do. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I mean, shout out Bruce Lee. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, not in the sense of like teaching martial arts, but in the sense of this is like my lifetime of information and knowledge and, you know, experience. But the way I'm looking at it is like, I want someone to be at the Rose Bowl flea market 200 years from now, come across this book in a bin, pick it up and be able to cook from it. And, and the, the recipes be as dope as they are now. Yeah. You know? Like where it's just timeless, like when, picking up an old album, like when you go digging. What's in a Brazil. cookbook for you though that is like that? Because I have one in my head, but I'm curious. I'd what say it. Zuni, the Zuni cookbook <clears throat> is like that. Um, a, a lot of chefs will know um, the approach that Judy Rogers had as a chef towards seasoning, towards uh, uh, curing and marinating, and just the approach towards cooking. It's timeless, you yeah. know? And, it, and it was a little bit revolutionary at the time. Uh, just one quick example is like she would season meats like hours and hours before cooking it or even the day before. Yeah. Um, which was kind of unheard of at the yeah. time, you know, because usually, uh, especially here in America, we're, we're kind of taught to season right in the pan or right as right yeah. before you cook. Right. So um, but a lot of her stuff was challenging status quo, but at the same time, it's timeless. So yeah, it's interesting you? for me when I like <clears throat> when I make a stew or I sear meat. I actually don't season unless I'm making yeah. like Jamaican curry. Yeah, right. Like that's the one time like right, I want it that season. Oh, usually, you put salt at the end after you've cooked it. Yeah, yeah, and I usually boil and braise in the aromatic. Yeah, right. Or if I'm gonna grill or smoke, then I will marinate mm -hmm. before. But otherwise, for for stews, do you marinate and then you go stew it? It depends on the stew. So like, um, but in most cases, no. Um, if I'm doing stews, I kind of like do uh, a remix of uh, Asian and Western technique. And so like in most cases, what I mean is that in French technique, let's say we're making a braised short rib or a braised oxtail. We will, in most cases, sear first. Yes. Right? Oil, sear, put your mirepoix in, deglaze, yeah. put your... your your broth in and then slowly yeah. cook and it becomes really dark exactly. and viscous and all that. Yeah. 
uh, in Asian braises, we soak our meats to get the impurities out yeah. in water. Water. And then you just go straight in the pot, yep. right? As you know, <clears throat> as what's going on back yeah, here. You yeah. just go straight in the pot and you just pour everything in and they just turn it on. Yeah. Top, you know? I combine the yeah. French with the Chinese yeah. because some dishes, mm -hmm. if I'm making a clear soup, yeah. water boil. Yep. If I'm doing a brown braise, red cook, I'll sear it and then put it all in the yeah. ingredients, slow pot. But to answer your question, because I, I really, this is an ill topic. Uh -huh. I've, yeah. I'm very interested in your cookbook. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I always thought that the best cookbooks are teaching you techniques, mm -hmm. not recipes. Yeah. I never use the measurements. Yeah. I was looking for the idea of dishes. So there's always that Harold Moore book on food and cooking. Oh yeah, of course. It's like, yeah. it's like the textbook, seminal yeah. textbook. I think in Chinese cooking, the book that I always will look at just to go back and see old classics is Pei Mei, P-E-I space M-E-I. Uh -huh. And she had like, she was the first one to have Chinese cookbook in English. Okay. And, and so she has like eight or nine volumes, but she's yeah. like the god for Chinese mm -hmm. cooking. But. Uh yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a gem right there as far as like, because uh, um, a lot of people I see that aren't chefs or, or professional cooks, they'll, they'll look at the recipe as they're cooking, yeah. which is not the right way to do it. Yeah. You know, um, you have to, it's almost like, act oh yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. She, cause she's a baker, she no, likes no, to no, bake. No, I like to yeah. bake. Yeah, baking's different. Yeah. recipe based. Like, yeah. Speaking of which, I'll bring her pie. Really, okay. She got a pie here, yes, no, you can go ahead. Not, oh, bake, baking's different. Yeah. yeah, so I'm wired, like uh -huh. I have that right brain mentality, he's so left brained mentality. But if you look at it in a sense of like, baking is like a teleprompter, right? Yeah. So if you're like running a reality show or a game show or a news yeah. channel and you have oh, a yeah, teleprompter, you have that's one to. thing. But cooking is like acting. You know, you have to absorb the role, the lines, yeah. all that stuff, and then just and then just go act. Let's do what she did. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel that. I was just thinking about opening okay. a pie restaurant where you just bring pies to the table and no, there's no cutter and you just scoop oh, out man. slices for people. Just caveman <laughs> pies. Would be, yeah, I that would be amazing. Like that. Caveman pies. There's something, eating with your hands is, to me, the best feeling in the world. Yes. I, I fucking love, love being pie. able to like scoop up. Yeah. Like finger food is everything to me. Where, where does pie rank up there for you for desserts? Yeah, are you a big pie guy? Uh, yeah, I'm a pie. I'm a pie guy. I'm I was thinking about my guy. gangster name being Cherry Pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite Sade song. Yeah, Cherry Pie. Yeah. Cherry pie. Cherry pie. Wait, there it you, is. Do you want some I'm the sensitive. Still? I'm the sensitive. Uh, the sensitive killer. Um, Bro, Cherry Pie is for real my favorite Sade joint. Like I, yeah. I probably listen to that song more than anything besides Idris. I would say Sweet that Sade. pies are probably one of the greatest inventions you know uh, for us right, as humans guys, well, because it it's so many things in one thing you I know hope this doesn't okay it's a, I like don't you know. were saying earlier it's a stew it's a yeah. bake it's a dessert but it's also a meal it yeah. can be savory it can be sweet um it's a lot of different things in one thing you know? should i do that do you want the stew first go. or the pie we can start with the pie, Yo, let's, here, start yeah. pie. let's go backwards let's yeah go backwards bro. i love it this is like the hot ones episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hope i don't burn start. my dick off this time Sometimes it's good to eat sweet before. So I just want to let oh, everyone know. This is my first time making a pie. I thought it was, when you no, said that, I thought it was yum. your first time making a cherry pie, but it was your first time no, making I've a pie. I've never made a pie in my life. I just think I've gotten into baking. But speaking of hot ones, that's pie. like going back to like the Sponto and me thing that you were talking about earlier. It's like you get on hot ones, but like, it's like Sponto and me, we don't get on hot ones. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like that kind of thing, but like, with his death, you know, like more people are gonna notice, you know, which, yeah. which is crazy, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, let's try this. Let's people, this it's, it's interesting that, why do you think it is that, because there was a moment mm. I felt like, oh. there, yeah. there was a moment I felt you were really mainstream and it was going that way, but then what, do you think it was a choice to just ma maintain I more like a regional presence? No, I think it's um, it's not. I don't think it's a choice to stop growth. Yeah. But it's a choice to not, um, because as you grow and not, and I think, I don't think that you sold out either. Mm. But there, but as you grow, sometimes there comes forks in the road. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And these forks come. What do you want to call it? Selling out. What do you want to call it? Homogenizing. What do you want to call it? Losing your edge. Whatever mm. it is. Whether you want to call it, you know. 
um, becoming mainstream or losing your, your, your you know, like, uh, what is it, like, just like your sharpness or your, your, mm-hmm. your blade, you know? Yeah. Um, as you grow bigger, all these, because there's more money involved. Yeah. People want to water investors. you down. They want to water yeah. you down. They're investors. They're there, there are more voices. There are notes, mm-hmm. you know, quote unquote notes to things. I hate that shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. as I approach towards these forks on the road, I sometimes took the left instead of taking the right because uh, I'm not good with notes. I'm not good with yeah. you know. I'm not good with people all up in my business. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I you know I feed the streets. I feed the people. Yeah. I only answer to the truth. You know? yeah. Um, and so I think because of that, there are decisions that I made that, um, you know, didn't get me to network television. Yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. Know, things like that or get me a streaming show or Thank you, um, stuff like that. You know, there. Uh, no, yeah, because in the in when you're selling it or they're mm-hmm. piloting it to get on, yeah. there's always a moment where they want you to dance. Mm-hmm. And like, I kind of didn't have a choice mm-hmm. with Fresh Off the Boat. It was just like. It's a funny thing with the businesses, when there's so much money to be made off mm-hmm. somebody, they're gonna make that money. Yeah. Like, you know, I was fighting things for oh, ever, nice. and we've, I've spoken, yeah, this pie is fucking banging, baby. Wow, thank you guys. You might have a new career. Mm-hmm. I can bake the pies you at your pie spot. You could be the next spot. Evelyn, the cheesecake, the pie factory. Yeah. Pie factory. <laughs> but, I'll make your hand-eaten pies. But, you know, I don't, I'm not against anyone that makes those decisions to, to, yeah. to grow yeah, like that. It's yeah. just for me. For you, you made the left choice. You know. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really driven by, like, I'm more driven by spiritual growth and spiritual mm-hmm. wealth, right? Yeah. And if if material wealth and and financial wealth comes with that, that's great. But yeah. mm-hmm. it's just a, kind of the character of who I am as a person. I'm cool, like chilling up here in the hills you know mm-hmm. with the coyotes you know mm-hmm. like that's just who i am and it takes like my team sometimes to pull me down you know pull me down back to yeah. earth and say like yo we gotta pay bills like get you know get your ass to work um yeah. but i'm kind of like just you know i'm a we're both pisces i'm a pisces man i'm yeah. a free pisces. I'm, you're a pisces too there we go yeah february 24th wow. yeah we close pisces. i'm just a free spirit man yeah. you know yeah. and sometimes as a free spirit when when you get pushed you just kind of fly away. You know, I swim, yeah. I swim mm-hmm. away sometimes. And no, that's, yeah. that's same. Fun, I'm, you know? I'm lucky enough that yeah. even in things I swam away from, the yeah. shit just kept going without me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because I left fresh off the boat after the first season because I did not fuck with it. Mm-hmm. But that thing went six, you know? And like, I know. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's ill. And then, you know, the funny thing is the thing I loved doing the most was Wong's World. Yeah. And, and it just like Vice ran into trouble. And yeah. all of us were out and you know it, it's kind of like i wish that one went six yeah you know but uh it's it's cool to look back on the life is like a, a like a young athlete that comes across a ton of money and just spent that shit like in yeah. the first year yeah. you know this is vince young at the cheesecake factory <laughs> vince like, young at the cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> they just they fucking Straight just on. ran out of money and then yeah. just had to fucking fill shit yeah from there. If, if vince yeah. young was like at the bellagio that's the vice story that's you know? what it is right? but, you know I, shane i hope you get it back you know you still got a few days till the bankruptcy's over <laughs> turn the worm baby turn, turn the, the worm. worm man learn from your mistakes you know? i don't know who you are shane but fucking yeah. get it right <laughs> Yeah, right, Shane's bro. the fucking Aww. best, bro. That shit yeah. just... We're, we're going to talk about it in another episode. That shit just got fucking crazy over there. Like, it was... It but was, that's an example of too much money, mm-hmm. too much going on, too many voices, yeah. too many yeah. responsibilities. I don't know what happened, but I can only imagine, you know? And yeah. you just... Sometimes it's better to just stay, you know... With what, Everybody you know, gotta go their grounded. pace. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's like that movie Whiplash where yeah. J.K. Simmons is like, is that my tempo? That's not my tempo. And like I think about it, I'm like, yo, there's a lot of times where I just decline shit too, where I'm like, yeah. this ain't my tempo. Or I like I'm yeah. like, I gotta work in a different way mm-hmm. with the certain person. It's like it's not my tempo. I had a couple bad luck moments too, because I did try. I yeah. did try because you know, as a creative person, I'm constantly pushing out mm-hmm. yeah. ideas and material and um with tv i just ran into a couple bad luck situations i don't know if you ran into this too where we were like okay i'll give it to you like this like in cooking yeah like 
if I'm gonna make this pie or open a pie, if we open fucking Cape Man pies together, yeah, there's nothing stopping me, right? No. There's nothing stopping me. No. We make it, we contact the people, people line up, we serve the pie, nothing stops us. But um, it's from you to the customer, straight and, yeah, and, and out. The, the closer you get, the more powerful it gets. In Hollywood, sometimes the closer you get, the farther you get. Like we sold shows, got to the one yard line. Mm -hmm. We're about to go into pre-production, and then everyone got fired. Yeah, all yeah. the motherfuckers got fired, and then the whole yeah. new troop of people come in, and they're like, "What's this on the docket? We're getting yeah. rid of this whole slate. We're going to move to another direction." You Yo, know? I always so that it. happened to me a couple times, which which was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, no, I've that always seen it. Here. Yeah, it yeah, happens all the time, right? Crazy. I've seen it in sports a lot too, where yeah. like a new GM takes over, and yeah. they're like, "You know what? You're not the quarterback I drafted. You're out." And I always thought that was such a crazy thing. And then I experienced it too here uh -huh. in Hollywood. Like, yeah. cause Wu and I had this, that Chino show. We oh, were yeah, doing the animated right. Chino yeah, show. Yeah, right. I was gonna hit you up to play a character. Cause that's right. there was just, it's just like, it's a lot of your kind of uh -huh. like area. Uh -huh. And I mean, bro, we had like Edison Chen on it. We had Danny Trejo on it. Like we had all Ready. these ill voices. Right. Uh -huh. And- um, Locked and loaded, right? Yeah, locked and loaded. And yo, HBO, had it was a competitive situation to buy the show yeah like uh hulu bid on it and mm -hmm. fx bid on it and it was super competitive and hbo won it at the end we were like damn so excited to be at hbo yeah but it just happened like the people that bought the show at hbo mm -hmm. once there was the merger all the directives changed everyone's responsibilities yeah. changed mm -hmm. dude the bot is at netflix now yeah. it's just a wrap they like they ended up just paying a penalty to me, being like, yo, yeah. sorry. I learned that whole thing, the difference between... Because me being the person I am, and being not just growing up here in Los Angeles, but being a chef, like, like, again, like, if we're going to make a restaurant, like, it, there's not a, they're not stages. It's like, yeah. okay, if someone says we're going to make this restaurant, we go full force and mm -hmm. make it until it's open, right? I learned the whole thing between being someone buying your idea or strip and green light. I didn't know about that yeah. shit, bro. Like my parents are immigrants. I didn't know yeah. the difference between bought yeah. and because you know when you hear you're like, oh shit, we're buying your script, or we're buying this. You're like, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then I didn't realize that was just like the start. Yeah. You know? No, I, <laughs> I didn't realize any yeah. of this shit till I got. Like, do you know how many times we get like so excited and we're uh -huh. like, yes, and then we're like, yeah. wait. What? That's not. There's Wait, more nose. There's more. I there's always was, yes. a turn. There's yeah. always yeah. something cra like the craziest things can happen. Like to make a movie, you got to steal the movie. To get yeah. a TV show on, yeah. it's a marathon. Like you just have to survive. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing is, I think, you know, dudes like you and I, women like you, is attracted to restaurant business or like illicit business because you don't have a boss and you just do yeah. what you want to do. And I'm like, yeah. I'm selling, you're buying. That's Done. it. Done. Yeah. That's easy to understand. And I have a vision. I know how I want to mm. do it. So, like, I don't need your notes. Either yeah. you're buying or you're not buying. Yeah. It's funny when Hollywood takes one of us out of that dynamic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, we love your voice. We love your energy. We love your story. Now, mm -hmm. tell us how to do it. Yeah. And it's like, wait, 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 what? Or, and then they're like, no, no, here, we'll tell you how to do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why don't you just buy and invest in me mm -hmm. and then like i'll turn it around for you yeah but it's never that but do your yeah. followers know the difference between do y'all know the difference between something being purchased and green light because that shit is wild dude it is a crazy yeah, thing yeah. like basically they'll buy your script yeah. all right so they may even just buy an idea yeah they might buy an idea and then they release money on each step like you turn in an outline yeah. you mm -hmm. get paid you turn in a script you get paid now we're going to do multiple revisions mm -hmm. you get paid on each revision you may go through the whole thing and then they're like you know what love you yeah. love the script yeah. love the story love this because we gave you all the notes mm -hmm. just didn't fit in the schedule mm -hmm. didn't fit in the slate we got we there's a merger we got acquired Mm -hmm. homie that shepherded this is fired somebody got canceled yeah. like there's so many things yeah. that can fucking happen and it has nothing to do with you yeah That's yeah it, yeah it's it's it's, yeah. it's tough to process <clears throat> though because um you know as a creative person you put everything you have into it and then 
they're saying, oh, it's not the content, it's the it's the environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's hard to not take it personally. Yeah, they always break up with you on some. Yeah. It's not you, it's us. Yeah. And I'm like, no shit, it's you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, of course it's you, yeah, man. I told you that. Yeah, but like, I would say, man, is this is hard and. Luckily, I got wifey to just lean on. You got another movie going? Yeah, I got yeah, another movie nice. going. Yep. You know, I was lucky enough that Focus Features was very supportive and, and yeah. they, they supported me through the process. But I understand, after making my first one, I understand now why when people get up there, mm-hmm. man or woman, the first person they think is their partner. Because your partner mm-hmm. is the person catching all of the neuroses and yeah. insecurity and pain oh, the personal and disappointment. Partner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, that's got because yeah. every day I think I have a breakdown every day because mm-hmm. writing for me is that direct yeah. thing it's just like yeah. you can't tell me what to do I'm writing mm-hmm. on f- film and TV show man. it's crazy yeah yeah no I think it's just you write and you direct and you uh-huh. produce so he's wearing all the hats, all hats. and everything yeah. he's doing so it's not just that he's responsible for like writing it and then they go sell it He's on every step And he even plays cameos, too. So there's four. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like Spike Lee. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's so crazy. And it is like, just to watch it, yeah. I'm like, wow, this is really taxing for a person to do everything and be on all the, and there's like times where he's also an attorney. Like, oh, that's yeah, a that's hat right. that oh, he doing also the, the contract wears. as well. Yeah, so he'll do like, if it can't get done, he'll be like, fuck it, I'll do the contract. Yeah. So it's just very demanding. And I think it's it's not something. Bro, when we attached easy. SZA, I had to get in between because you know people were people were negotiating and stuff. Uh-huh. And yeah. I ended up talking to SZA's attorney, Josh Binder, every day. I really like that guy. Shouts uh-huh. to Josh Binder. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I even got into the document, mm-hmm. like redlining shit, because yeah. people didn't agree. And I was like, mm-hmm. I don't care if you don't agree. We need SZA. This is happening. Yeah. This is happening. But. You have to I go think, through Top Dog with that, or she has is a whole different side of her. Oh no, it'll it'll be like Punch, you know, like you talk to Punch and mm-hmm. stuff. But then, uh, you know, the attorney is Josh Binder, mm. so Josh Binder is kind of you know, All right. the, at least for us on our deal, he was the trigger man. You know, yeah. I always like I always like having a good relationship with the trigger man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it's crazy, like just with this Hollywood stuff, it's the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. That's why when. We sit down and we watch something like a uh-huh. new show, or yeah. I'm just like, I can't help but now think about every single piece that went into getting yeah. that on. I'm like, that's so crazy. <laughs> and when you watch a be... show that's ass, yeah. it's like, yo, how the fuck did this get through everybody? Oh, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, I'm just like, this is so crazy because it's years and I know so there's so many cooks in the kitchen with everything. Oh, thank you. And some extra wow. salt as well if you want to season. Mm. But mm, oh, you yeah, know, Asian, nice. we always a little lighter hand so you can season, you know, yourself. Nice smells. Yeah. Ooh, this is a tagine. This is a tagine. Yeah, it's uh chickpeas, apricots, fresh that we picked. Mm-hmm. Short rib, brisket, oxtail, Ooh, little nice. parsley, garlic, ginger, cumin, cinnamon. How did you make it out to LA? Were you in entertainment? Is no, I wasn't in here? entertainment at all. I actually was living in New York. I lived uh-huh. in New York for. God, in the past like 10 She's years. She's imported. <laughs> and Thank you, my man. I landed out here during so the pandemic. So. Just on some random shit. Random shit. Like I was here when the pandemic happened. Okay. So I was, you know, I stayed out here. I didn't go back to New York. Um, just to have more space if mm. you want. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And then just never went back. I did go back. Oh, you did? And then I was playing that like cat and mouse game that people do with New York and LA for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, went back to New York and then we met. Uh-huh. And I came out here. You all met in New York? Yeah. While you was doing Boogie or? No, we met, mm-hmm. um, what, 2021? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right after Boogie. Boogie had come out. Oh. You know, and mutual then, friends or party? Yo, or? dating app. <laughs> dating app. Dating app. Yeah, 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 yeah. I missed the whole yeah. fucking dating app. Yeah, no, the dating app. I'll be fucking killing it right now. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, would, bro. Yeah. You would, man. Get the hall pass. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're not missing anything. Dating apps are ass. We yeah. just got lucky. We did get lucky. Um, That's great. But yeah, we, I hear nothing but success stories sometimes from most people that I meet that met through dating apps. It's like. I haven't heard the horror stories, but I hear a lot of success stories. Yeah. I mean, especially I feel like for people our generation, our age, right? Like late Mm -hmm. 30s, Mm -hmm. early 40s, you already 
experience dating and then this is some new tech shit mm -hmm. and you're like wait i know how to use this for a productive purpose yeah. i think if i was young getting into dating apps i would yeah. go yeah that i mean i was young yeah you dating was young. apps and like you was young you still yeah, young. it can be a shit show at times yeah it's definitely not all good okay like, there's a lot yeah. of there's there's some mud to get through okay. <laughs> there's a lot but, of mud yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I just feel like the universe does its thing. When you're supposed to meet somebody, you're uh -huh. going to meet them. You're going to meet them, yeah. Yo, I got a question for you, Roy, about uh -huh. food, right? Yeah. It's like, when you cook other cultural food, like this is Moroccan food, mm. do you still cook it like kind of with your Korean technique or are you fully immersed and you're like, yo, I'm going to do it um, proper? I mean, not Korean technique, but I, I'm definitely not great at following things exactly like they're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, part of that is my Pisces nature, my, my mm -hmm. ADD, um, a little bit of my learning disorders in life. And so because of that, I take, I take a very, you know, um, you know, wide open approach towards everything I do. You know, everything's kind of like a uh, DIY in mm -hmm. my whole life. I mean, you could look at the Kobe truck to anything. And so yeah. I don't think it's necessarily Korean, but it's like, I will look at it and I'll just cook it the way I want to cook it. Yeah. You know? Cause I feel like that, that was, of all the chefs when we were coming out i felt like you and me was the most kindred spirit like in the mindset mm -hmm. the way we approached it we were not precious about it we yeah. didn't put it on a pedestal yeah. we kind of did common sense shit common sense shit yeah yeah and like when i make like like this is a moroccan dish i still use a lot of chinese technique because it mm -hmm. makes sense to me yeah you mm -hmm. know but yeah. Because it's Silk Road food, Middle Eastern, a lot of Middle Eastern and Chinese technique is very similar. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, this shit is pretty floral. I like it. I it's really know. good, man. First yeah. time you're making this? First time I've ever oh, made really like good. tagine. Yeah, thanks, man. I'd be eating it, it in Bogota. It does feel like a, a porridge, too. <laughs> you know, I'm glad it's rice versus couscous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Couscous, for right. sure. Yeah. You know me, bro. I, I have uh -huh. to put this shit on rice. How's the podcast going? How many oh, how many episodes it. have you guys done? So this far? is, I think, the sixteenth. You're the sixteenth yeah, episode. 16. Oh shit! This episode is number sixteen. We've been loving it. Sixteen bars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised you haven't done a podcast. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, going back to the whole thing of like, I don't know. I'm I'm. It sometimes takes. I, I'm like a kid. I'm like a kid on a PlayStation in a room. Mm -hmm. that, that's the best way I can describe myself as a person is like I'm fine like I'm literally yeah. fine you give me you know a gallon of water I won't leave that room like I don't need nothing I don't need to do nothing you were shut in but yeah I'm a <laughs> shut in but if someone, if, yeah, if like, someone says like yo let's roll and I'm, yeah. I'm ready in a second yeah sometimes it takes that for um me to do stuff because if I if if I someone doesn't say or tap me on the shoulder and say let's go do something I'll just I'm fine the way I am. Bro, know? that's the best it way yeah. I've ever heard it put because we always talk about are we extroverted or introverted? Yeah. yeah. And the way you just explain it, that's exactly my mindset. <laughs> I'm good not moving, mm -hmm. but I will clip up. Oh, yep. If you exactly. want to roll out, I'll clip up. Yeah. And so that's probably why I don't have a podcast because I I haven't yeah. really like, thought about doing it. <laughs> she might even be sleepier than, than all of us. <laughs> I really she think like, I might really, be. She, I, I might clip up and she'd be, you know what? You go ahead, babe. <laughs> Ahead. And she'd be here just watching everything on the Peacock oh. channel. <laughs> Damn. No, but I feel you. We're DIY, we're super DIY too. Uh -huh. I mean, this whole shit was. Mm -hmm. We like hit up Julius one day, and we we're like, mm -hmm. "You want to go to like Radio Shack? Because that's the mm -hmm. thing." Or yeah. like Best Buy. We were like, "Let's go buy our shit." Um, and it's just on your own channel. Yeah, like yeah. Because right? people, I think, when they hear about it, a lot of times their first thing is like, "Oh, who's your partner on it?" I yeah. was like, "My wife and Julius," uh -huh. and we yeah. got no marketing no promo no publicist because our idea with this pod is it's intended for people to just leave us running on youtube so it's like yeah. they're hanging out in the crib with us because mm -hmm. i like that type of youtube mm -hmm. where you're just a voyeur or you feel like you're in a different yeah. room yeah and the so. bigger this gets you know pretty soon people you know partners or whatever are going to be approaching you guys yeah and then you don't have to you know change it because mm -hmm. they're going to be buying what you've already created you know? but it's that thing we were talking about yeah it's like mm -hmm. if we did that initially there would be just so many voices and mm -hmm. do this and you should have this segment and have these guests yeah. on we just wanted it to be like what we wanted that's what happened yeah. with um one of the biggest podcasts in the world dax's podcast mm -hmm. armchair expert yeah we just started with him and monica just shooting the shit and yeah. then yeah and then 
then it turned into something because it got so popular, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's be because when we first started talking to people, everyone was like, we'd love to produce this with you. Uh -huh. We'd love to do the ad sales, but could you have more segments? Could you do this and that? Oh, mm -hmm. ad sales, and yeah. I was just like, yeah. yo, man, that's not what we want to do. Like, you already have yeah. thousands of podcasts with that same format, yeah. mm -hmm. telling the same jokes. Uh -huh. We're like, we do a news segment when we cook now, but it's funny stuff. Like, there was a dog in the Lowry Steakhouse last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me ask you this, would you bring a dog to a steakhouse? Yeah. That's that's a pretty bold move. <laughs> like a Lowry steakhouse where they're doing a la carte, like cutting your meat at your table? That could be evil, but also genius at the same time. It's evil in the sense if you're not going to let the dog sit at the chair. Yeah. And yeah. eat and grub, like have his own cowboy prime rib. Yeah, you, know? yeah, you kind of have to. That's kind of mean. Yeah. You're kind of like... Mm -hmm. You're cucking the dog. You're yeah. cucking the dog. You put him in the middle of like... You're like, enjoy this yeah. aroma. Um... But it, you know, if he can eat, then that's kind of genius. Yeah, I think they, I think they're giving the dog some. At least in this case, I think they were feeding the dog. Yeah. Oh, them? No, they were not. They had the dog under the table. I think I saw they might have put it. like a little. Yeah. Did they sneak plate. the dog in or? No, did they, not at all. Uh, like bro, in homie arm, came in just cuffing oh. a dog, holding the dog like yeah. a baby, <laughs> and I was like, damn! Like they were coming at our table, and I was like, there's a dog in the steakhouse mm. right now. <laughs> it was wild. Why well, would you? I would fuck with a steakhouse where it's like the dog gets to eat too. Yeah, doggy plates. That would be a fire concept. Yeah, like an all outdoor patio restaurant where it's like barbecue for humans and then chopped up meat for dogs. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that that place Lazy Dog was going to be that. But oh it's, really? It's, it's not really. It's more like you could just bring dogs. Okay. And they have some menu items for dogs, but I would like. And Lazy Dog, I mean, they're they're doing great as far as like being an ally to pet owners you know and pets themselves yeah. and dogs themselves but like i'd like it to see it move to one more level to where the whole experience just like at home like you're just yeah. chilling in a restaurant all your all your there are animals there, the bird is fine. They're there yeah. I would like to combine the weed restaurant with the dog restaurant, mm -hmm. steakhouse. Yeah. Let me get a steakhouse with weed and dogs. <laughs> yeah, the weed restaurant thing hasn't really taken off yet right it was supposed to take off like a few yeah years ago, it felt right? like it was going to yeah and then it just kind of died down it's better than hookah i'm like if you yeah. go to hookah you're gonna love the weed restaurant yeah but what are people do, would they do like infusion stuff i would just want to smoke like hit a bong or smoke yeah. joints yeah i think it's better you know maybe you could do some edibles but i think it's better just the ability to mm -hmm. smoke and then eat you know mm -hmm. yeah um and then have food that taste better when you're stoned you yeah because there are certain foods that like do taste better when you're stoned like a milkshake for example is one mm -hmm. for sure this cherry pie would be another oh yeah it would be a hitter this would be another <clears throat> yeah just stew on rice just anything like decadent is so much better i'm really such a like fast food junkie when i'm stoned <clears throat> Yeah. Or like, I'll hit up a super buffet. You know, honestly, I think my favorite super stone buffet. food is like a Hawaiian barbecue plate. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, with yeah. like mac and like mm -hmm. potato salad and just like a fucked up grilled like kalbi yeah. rice. Oh. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's something about Hawaiian plate lunch food, like when you're stoned or coming out of the water. It's yeah. Just like, it's crazy. It's like, it's the weight of this pie, but you just yeah. devour it, you know, the whole thing. Uh, I gained the most weight in Hawaii. Yeah. Every trip I go to Hawaii, instant uh -huh. six pounds. And I'm like, what happened? This like, it was poi, and it was just like this and that, but you just eat so much of you it. eat so much. And people would be putting like hamburgers on top of your plate. The loco moco. Loco moco might be my favorite high food, like, ever. It's, pretty, it's a pretty stoner food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been watching uh, over the past couple of years. You, your, and Dave Chang's uh, uh, bonding. Well, yeah, bonding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been. Uh, yeah, it's been good, man. Yeah, it's been good. It's been, it's good. been good. It's been good for for the Asian community. It's been good for you know someone that knows both of you guys separately. Yeah, and watching the whole thing unfold. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember yo, it was always you, Shane, and Tony would be like, Yo, Eddie. He ain't bad, man. He's cool. He's yeah. cool. Like, he's yeah. cool. And I'm like, yo, whatever, man. He, like, he claimed that Taiwanese bow for Korea. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nah, I fucking love that food. Yeah. Like, 
he really is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you would hear stories about him being like super like aggro in the kitchen or whatever, yeah. but bro, that dude is a sweetheart. He he's just tried, he yeah. just wanted to do well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, you can't, you can't judge someone's him. character based on their, it's like, if someone's a, a, a killer on the court, that doesn't mean that they're not a great person off the court, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. You, you know, you want your you want your heroes, you know, you can't pacify your heroes if that's what you what you admire them for. Yeah. yeah, that is one of the things I in a workplace. I'm like, yo, we are trying to win something here. Yeah. So it's like you got to put that work hat on. Yeah. You, and I think the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about like better workplace stuff in kitchens. And I yeah. definitely get that. Like there needed to be marked improvement. Yeah. But. I do think there is a moment for conversation, maybe not now, maybe in like six months, 12 months, 18 months, about like, yo, but where is the boundary? Like, where's the floor? Yeah. And it's not that you want to treat anyone bad, but it's that like, in the heat of battle, mm. trying to just like get through tickets every night, mm. there is a little bit of like, you need someone who's gonna make a play. Yeah, yeah, you can't be, you can't be hurtful and mean to people no. and cross the line, but. You can't also have a world where everyone gets a trophy either. You know, there has to be some place where you know you you, you have a safe space and the ability where everyone agrees that you can push the line. You know, for a championship. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, because the you know the opposite of that is just mediocrity. You know? And you don't. Nobody wants that. Right? Yeah. Nobody wants that. That was one of the best compliments I got from a. Uh, dude that worked on Wong's world was mm -hmm. like I never worked this hard mm -hmm. I never worked in as intensive an environment yeah. but the one thing I really like working with you is I show up every day and I feel like <clears throat> we have a chance to win a Super Bowl or win something yeah. or, or do something special because yeah. yeah. you want to yeah and I think on every team you need a dude who's like I'm gonna create plays like you're gonna get the ball hit that three when you get it mm. or move the rock but like I'm gonna try to create some fucking plays for us opportunities I used to hear stories of Jordan like from other players just yeah like, not you know we've all heard the all the stories you know especially after watching the last dance but like it's like <laughs> other crazy shit like, he used to foam at the mouth like foam at the that's like wild. literally foam at the mouth like your yeah, dog's out, yeah. like like just like you know like just like that's primal just, shit yeah, yeah primal shit like he's not gonna lose and he, and you just look at his teammates and just like <laughs> foam at the mouth like yeah. you're like a t-bone steak you know just yeah you know if you don't get up off your ass and do this like you will die you know? yeah <laughs> and i mean i think he slapped steve kerr yeah you know yeah. that shit crazy it's but it's crazy dude. he's kind of the greatest of all time i'm not saying that's what made him yeah i'm not condoning it i just do yeah. think there's a conversation that's due yeah in in a little bit you know but oh i have a question for you yeah do you watch the bear mm. i do uh my friends are all involved in it obviously mm. maddie mm. you know um chris store shout out maddie chris store yeah. chris store the showrunner is an the old best friend. part of that show yeah he's, I his love acting it. is incredible so good. oh my god yeah. maddie's on fire uh <laughs> courtney the culinary producer is a is a homie mm -hmm. is chris's sister um a lot of the people on there are, are friends i watched the first season i okay. haven't started the second season yet okay so we're still on um, season one Oh, still season one. Yeah, we're, I see. We're, we're you gang, so you, you gotta. For sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you. Um, mm. You know, I, I, I think it's a I, I think it's a show that is pushing new. Uh, it, it's like using all of these. I, I think it's a show that's really. I want to say the right thing because I, I think it's a show that's really like trying to pull in these really unique ways of making film yeah. into a television format. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is a lot of aspects of French New Wave, fast yeah. cuts, mm -hmm. um, you know, really, really pulling in, um, you know, the language and the, and the rhythm of a kitchen. And, um, you know, it's gonna get there, man. It's, it's like, it was a huge surprise mm -hmm. that it became like that and Beef becoming the number one shows in America, yeah. Yeah. you know, it was like, like the two things that I represent food and being Asian yeah. you know? <laughs> for us I we love the filmmaking of the yeah. bear I yeah. think they actually nail yeah. yeah the new wave cinema being tight in people's faces shaky like yeah. handheld camera like the cinematography is incredible I think mm -hmm. the directions incredible the acting's on fire yeah. everybody mm -hmm. in there <clears throat> phenomenal actor I think I have trouble getting into the show because of how 
much it dramatizes restaurants. You know, that's been, I, a lot, that's that's been the only to. critique. And I love yeah. you, Chris. I yeah. love you, Maddie. And every, you know, everyone loves the show. It, yeah, it's, so just, it's a hit. It, the only part is that those of us in the industry, are, like some jokes are like, mm-hmm. we don't talk that much, you know, yeah. <laughs> like that. You yeah. know, we, we don't, you know, things aren't that dramatic. Yeah. And, you know, like, it's, you know, like it's our whole family doesn't get pulled into things all the time and all those yeah. things. So like, you know, for us, it's just work. You know, we're just busting our ass. Yeah. Doing our thing. For you know? sure putting on some hip-hop and just prepping all day mm-hmm. you know so yeah it's uh you know like if our lives were like that i don't know if we could run the kitchens you know you yeah know, you know totally. so there's yeah. part of me that wishes the restaurant was just a backdrop uh-huh. and then we get into their lives to be more like cheers you yeah. know what i mean but like that's like it's just more i was curious to hear what you thought yeah. and i'm asking because i think I, that's one of the most questions we get people all the time yo what do you guys think about the bear you like yeah. it because they want a chef perspective yeah and i'm like look from a filmmaking perspective that show is lights out but, but i think, I think a lot of that yeah. is you know we have to understand like chris's point of view and and the bear is, or the, the original beef restaurant and their drama but a lot of it it it's kind of like um it gave people on the outside and inside look whether that inside mm-hmm. look is completely accurate or not mm-hmm. you know it's it's entertainment some All of right. it was dramatized yeah. but it gave people like the feeling like like what the f1 show did for a lot of people that documentary thing like yeah. it gave people the feeling yeah. like they could be a part of this world that was shut off yeah before. yeah but for real f1 fans they're yeah. like yo what the fuck I yeah. Need this. yeah exactly and so maybe in that case it it had to go that way but then now that they've got the world's attention they can come back down to reality you know agree yeah bit, you know? for sure bro you you do understand this development green light shit a lot yeah. more than you <laughs> yeah, I do, you know yeah. yeah hollywood where you at yeah man? come on man i was like, like a green light a fucking show for me one day <laughs> one day you got a you got a few you had the cnn joint right yeah that was a digital yeah. one um got the chef show on netflix with john favreau yeah um nice. I do. Uh, you, had I offset, movie, you had the movie with John too. Yeah, chef movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did a bunch of PBS stuff called Broken Bread. Yeah. Which is social justice, uh, food related uh, mm-hmm. content, and then um, yeah, and then I just do a lot of you know like online shit. Yeah. If you were gonna make a show, now, what's your dream show? Forget the execs, forget everything. Oh. This ain't even a pitch. I want to know what does Roy want to make. Well, you know, I, a lot well, of it I has been speak. based around like using my life story a little bit as a like i wrote a book called la sun mm-hmm. which was like kind of like great book my you know fresh off the boat and uh you know there are a lot of stories in there that represent a certain period in los angeles and orange county um that i think we could bring to life it's like a you know mm-hmm. it's like a bronx tale or something like that that we could bring to life um that would bring not only honor a lot of the people that were around me, but the the culture that existed in the '90s, you know, here in Los Angeles, and um, and you know, I, w- I want to do a scripted version of that. Um, that was the that was the scripted version that that kind of got to the one yard line a couple times, and everyone got fired, you know. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then plans changed. Um, I'd also like to, you know, I'm, you know, I don't know. If, I mean, you know, but I don't know if everyone, a lot of the work that I do is work on the ground, you know, um, uh, around access and, um, you know, the inequities of food and social justice and giving people um, the abil- ability to rise and the training and the access to information. So I want to, I, I want, and also just gifting people, you know, and being, um, creating a world of generosity and love. So I, I'd like to, build a show that that just like fucking f- takes care of people you mm-hmm. know you know and like just like gives people like you know i have a lot of connections in life i thought of a show where i could just bring people that are like leaders in their fields and just go to places that need the most help and just go and fucking help you know and um reverse it, gordon ramsay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's not kitchen yeah. nightmares yeah. It's, it's it's uh it's more of an uplifting show. I'm into a lot of uplifting stuff of like just yeah. really taking care of people, um, caring for people, going the extra mile. Um, a lot, of, unfortunately, that stuff. Advertisers don't really get on board with a lot of that stuff because they need drama, conflict, yeah, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, all that stuff. All but, the sexy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, people. But on the streets and in the communities, that stuff is strong. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that that stuff uh, goes forever, but. Um, 
it, it it's hard translating that into yeah cinema sometimes it doesn't have to be yeah. translated like yeah. that part of your life maybe you know if they're giving you issues then there will be a way like I, I think the thing is like stories take so mm -hmm. many forms yeah. mm -hmm. over time and eventually your story will take the form yeah. it's meant to take and it goes yeah, yeah. I, I want I want to do a talk show too like I yeah. like a like a I want to do like a like a fucking live like variety show That'd yeah. Be cool. yeah 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 you know That'd just be like funny. yeah, yeah. that would be fun, <laughs> fun because I can just like kind of, you know to be honest the show I've been thinking about a lot is like what Emerald did with Emerald Live, but like remixed. Mm -hmm. remixed. Yeah, I mean, yo, I love Emerald Live, dude. I'm saying I used to, I used to learn how to cook like American food from Emerald. Yeah, like I learned how to do Thanksgiving Shout from out Emerald. Emerald. I'm pitching wow. that. I'm God. pitching that show right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. on separate Boy. bedrooms. Like, yes. live. like we take Emerald. Like we bring Emerald to, uh, on as well, and we fucking like remix that shit. Yeah. to today, you yes. know. Yeah. So, um, you know, I get you know uh, musician friends yeah. to be the band DJs. You know, we well, have British jazz band would be fly. British jazz yeah. is kind of fly right now. You with a British jazz band. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You Roy, know, live. Yeah. Oh, I like we're that. We're cooking. Roy we have live. a crowd. We're yeah. feeding yeah. people, and we're just talking about ill shit. You know, yeah. and that's it. You know, no, no agenda. It's just like, um, I have an idea for mm -hmm. you. I have an idea for you because I've been talking to like a, a brand. It's, it's a bigger brand that does really nice suiting, mm -hmm. and I was telling them I wanted to cast like character actors from some of my favorite films mm. to play characters in a jazz band and mm. i was going to film them in this clothing and stuff like that mm -hmm. but this would be even more fly if it was the jazz band but mm. part of a cooking show live like that yeah. shit would yeah. be hard bro be hard, hard. In suiting. Yeah. that would be fly because I'm, I'm doing this commercial for this like suit suit company oh. designer this is a designer mm. so but dude you should Roy get him on like live. Eric Andre's band, the suits on Eric Andre's. Oh my god! Oh wow! <laughs> but yo, you need to do Roy live. Yeah, I would. I would fuck with you on that. You I trying to do so. Roy live? Yeah. Let's do Roy yeah. live. Bro. I, I, you know, you know got, like, I, I got people. You got people. Let's, yeah. let's do Roy. I live. was thinking. Um, I'm only saying all this because you asked me. Like, what? Yeah. What, what, what yeah. would that in my dream world? Because, you know, I think um, for me, like without cameras, like I'm on. I'm on. If you put me out in the street with a thousand people, like. Um, you know i'm in complete control that's mm -hmm. like my that's like my native habitat yeah. so it's like let me get that environment that energy um feeding people on the streets and let's put that just just put a camera on that you know yeah. what i mean and then that's it yeah and it'll be over after that that's what's up this this might have been one of the best meals we've had on this pod this was great fuck man I saw you had Nair Hawthorne. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Homie, yeah. yeah. Bro, he was hype. You're coming <laughs> on, you know? Oh, man, we go way back. He's, he's yeah, all that L.A. LA music indie scene, you know? Yeah. Mm. Damn, I know you got a hard out, too. What time? Is you? Mm. I'm not sure. Your hard out comes I do have up. a hard out. Uh, but In like 20 minutes, so I no, feel like, like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. we good. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to respect Natasha oh, yeah. with the hard out. Yeah. You have to. Natasha's the boss. Bro, I, she was she was telling me about the booking. I was like, yo, Roy has the most on point manager in Philly. Yeah. yeah. Natasha. Are you a Natasha, Natasha or Natasha? Are you you're Natasha? I'm Natasha. Yeah. There's like a, there's an eye. There's an eye. Like, yeah, I saw the eye. We don't, we don't, well, you don't, don't you know, it's a eye. silent we eye. Just do Natasha. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. I feel like Natasha so, gets a little. So I have like, yeah, I have crazy. a Natasha in my life. She's my right hand on everything. Been with me since day one and. Um, she's my offensive lineman. You got to like get that. through Natasha to get to me. The energy mm -hmm. Everyone of that knows. name just like handles business. I yes, feel. it yeah. does. It's like it's a real like your name really holds energy. I think in life. I'd be texting all the guests, but it ain't real. You're not booked till you get the Natasha email. That's it. Because Eddie could just be out here talking on text. <laughs> That's it. But if it's not in her calendar, you're not booked. I'm trying to buy the URL. I think someone has it, but I have a URL in my mind, talktonatasha.com. Yeah. That's it. So I like, you want to make business cards, but everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, talk to Natasha. That's what I'm saying, because you know how it is, man. Everyone's approaching it, blah, 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 and you just mm -hmm. give me yeah. that card, and that's it. But you very elegant with it. Yeah. Like, I learned from you with uh -huh. this shit, because I remember watching, like, around LA Sun was when you started having her around. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember you doing it. I was like, damn, Roy's shit is running dumb smooth. Yeah. Like, I need that. Yeah. You know? She is, I mean, shout out Natasha. Hello. Yeah. Uh, she's huge in my life because 
I say yes to everything. You know, yeah. like I said, I'm just a kid playing PlayStation. You tap me on the shoulder. I'm like, all right, let's yeah. go. Let's go fucking break windows. I don't care. Yeah. You know, whatever. Um, but she like, and then, you know, and it's not. It's like you as a public figure. So it's not. It's not the right move. Like if someone is excited or nervous or whatever, and they come up to you. To, the first thing that they hear from your mouth is like, no, I, you know, yeah. talk to my lawyer or whatever. Yeah. You got to give them all your energy. You mm -hmm. know, you have to give them, you have to hear them out, give them your energy, fuck with them, have fun, smile, yeah. and, and just give them hope. You know, like, hey, yeah, man, that sounds like a great idea. You know, like, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, but like, if you want to talk business, like, my whole thing is like, if anyone want to talk to me about anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's fucking talk. But if you want to talk business, you got to talk to Natasha. Yo, I'm funny. Cause <laughs> people like that, come to me with like ideas, that. and I'll be. Like, Yo, not for nothing. Like, love you, bro. Yeah. Thank you for the support. I'm gonna save you time. I don't think that's gonna work. You know, <laughs> oh, like, shit, I, blood, will, I will be funny yeah, like that. Realist. But <laughs> I get in a lot of shit all the time. Cause, yo, my feeling is this. I feel like if you're talking to the quote unquote talent, right? Yeah. And you text and you're having fun, you gotta just know until they talk to their manager yeah. or their agent or their business partner, yeah. nothing, nothing is for sure. Yeah. And you also gotta give them the respect to like go back to their team and then come back and be like, yo, my bad, Absolutely. I talked to the team. Absolutely. I don't know. That's the one thing that I get caught up on the most with homies yeah. Yeah. and just people I just meet socially. Well, you said it was, and I'm like, yo, I said I gotta talk to my team. Yeah, for sure. Like, but as a person, like I don't have an agent or a team or like manager. I'm your team. Me and Julius for is a sure. team. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are my team. You know. Yeah. But like until I met you and and had mm -hmm. in taste of what that yeah. world is like, that wouldn't have made sense to me either. I would have been like, but you fucking said you wanted to do it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's you hard know? to say <laughs> yeah, that to yeah. someone. It's true. That doesn't have that yeah. knowledge base yeah. or that experience because yeah. they. They might just be a fan of yours, yeah. you know, and they might just come up to you and say, "Hey, man, you know, like, you know, blah blah blah." I want, yeah. you know, like, or I have maybe this great the idea. homie, you know, or, the, I mean? or the homie, yeah. Exactly, and, and word is usually bond. You know what I mean? Like, usually yeah. it's like if somebody tells me we're gonna do something, I'm like, "Oh, we're fucking doing it." Like, it's it's. Yeah. But I get that. I was thinking, in my I was personal thinking, life, yeah, if uh -huh. I tell a friend on some friend shit, I'm gonna do that. But if you asking me about work. You better get M88 to sign <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? No, because it's sure. just, it's not paid in full. But a lot of it, you don't want to, it's hard to, as a, as the talent or the creative person or the, someone that approaches, it's hard to explain to them yeah. the intricacies because they're yeah. caught up in the excitement mm -hmm. or the, or the, or the imagination of what it could be. None of it is yeah. malicious sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, like, oh. for example, speaking of old homies, it's like. I grew up around a lot of tough dudes, like yeah. a lot of tough dudes. And and so as I started to become a little more exposed or like out there in the world, they want all want, they're like, yo, let me be a bodyguard, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I had yeah, to sit yeah. it down and explain to her, like, I, I don't have fans like yeah. that. Like, yeah. you know, like no one's like trying to climb in my hotel window. Bro, we or went anything. to go eat at Sunday <laughs> day and a dude followed us out from the kitchen and yeah. was like, yo, I'm a gangster, I got you. I got like, you. I know who you are. Like. Yeah. You need anybody holler at me yeah. here's my number i'm like yo i'm i'm good bro I, yeah. like i might hit mcdonald's and go home yeah, you know? yeah. i yeah. might get a grimace shake but like dudes really be <laughs> jumping out the they woodwork. and so that was the moment where yeah. i knew i needed like natasha in my life because like i could i couldn't explain <laughs> correctly to my old homies like because they just took it like oh roy don't need me anymore mm -hmm. yeah you know and so I, I could explain it. So that, so in that scenario, it helps. Yeah. It helps, man. Yeah. Because it's you know, Because also, dudes think you got a lot more bread than you do. Bread or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Not just yeah, everything. Bread yeah. and everything that comes with it. They think they yeah. have. You, yeah, you have a lot more. Um, and also, they don't get they, like it's just hard to understand. And I, I empathize with yeah. it. Like we just having you know Hollywood complaining session right now, which is yeah. wonderful. But it's <laughs> like there's so many people that depend on you to eat. Yeah. Like your whole team, like 10% of what you do is how that person eats and that person eats and that person eats. Yeah. And so it's just like, I used to make decisions by myself and be like, yo, I told my friend I would do that. We doing that. And then I drag everybody into yeah. it and I'm like, oh fuck, this is a team. Yeah. And if you don't actually treat it like a team, then you're yeah. just lying. I'm like, yo, I need everyone on the same page or we yeah. can't get money right. But it's also hard, um, especially when you get friends and people you know involved, who I am as a chef and a worker workplace mm -hmm. and who I am socially are kind of different. Yeah. So my kitchen team, yeah. they know like, you know, sometimes I've had situations where I brought people on board, but they, 
knew me as one person, but they didn't know me as the chef. Yeah. So then they come in and I expect a whole different level. Yeah. You know, and it's hard. That whole thing is hard. Too. That's, that's the hardest yeah. one. Yeah. That's, that's where I struggle. Real. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it is hard when you've been friends with someone for so long yeah. and you know a different side of them. And then all of a sudden you're getting the business hat, whatever it is, mm -hmm. if it's in the restaurant or what I like, mm -hmm. that's a different person. Yep. And sometimes that's jarring for people to perceive. Let you know? me ask you this. Since we've been doing the pod, has it been, because this oh, yeah. us doing business, yeah, is it different or too. weird? No. I think because we had a moment in our relationship where we're both Pisces. So oh, like yeah. I, my energy is so go with the flow. Yeah. Like nothing is ever urgent or pressing yeah, to me, really. Like it has to be really fucking serious yeah. to where I'm like, okay, I'm on it. Yeah. But once I am on it, I can, it's go time. Yes. We got it done. But I think just in our relationship, leading up to the podcast i figured out pretty quickly that that shit like isn't cool with you like <laughs> no just keeping it real like Yo, keep it I, real. he would be like oh can you do this and i was like sure yeah uh -huh. and then like a, a week would pass and he'd be like did you do it oh. and i was like oh like i didn't know it was that serious yeah. so my like level of just yeah it's true you know yeah. like i i bring a different side of myself because i know like to this podcast had we not had those conversations and all that happened mm -hmm. i think it would have been you would have been natasha it been rocky yeah you know? relationship because, natasha versus but going business, into this yeah. i was like i just you don't even have to ask me anymore yeah. i'm just like i'm i'm gonna i know he's gonna ask for this so i'll mm -hmm. do it a week before and it works for us because the switch went off and she yeah. treats this like a business yeah and where it's been like honestly i have the most heartache and struggle with my life mm -hmm. is i really like to create opportunities for homies mm -hmm. i like to open up spots absolutely but when they come in a lot of times and i empathize with them i get it it's really hard for them to see and treat me as a boss yeah. or a authority figure when you've been friends with me for 10 years or you've been friends with me for five years and but like, you but you also touched on something a lot of people like have a perception that there's more bread or more mm -hmm. there are more things than there really is. Yeah. But the, what they don't see is you're dealing with, like if we were running a tech company, it'd be different, right? But yeah. like you're dealing with two forms that have incredible exposure, restaurants and entertainment. Mm -hmm. But really the bread behind it is not what people know. No. Yeah. Because restaurants, there may be revenue, but there's so, many, so much cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at the end of the day, like everything is like, you're two days away from bankruptcy you yeah know? every yeah every bit counts yeah and you have every to have bit counts. that attitude that we were talking about that jordan shit like yeah. mm -hmm. the leader has to be foaming at the yeah. mouth and then i think a lot of my friends come in and are like oh my god like mm -hmm. he's intense at work mm -hmm. and he's like because i don't really sugarcoat shit i'll be like mm -hmm. yo we need to get that done yeah if it's like three hours to the deadline i said we needed it done yeah do you have it? Because if you don't have it, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do it. And they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. why are you mad? I'm like, I'm not mad. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not going to lose. Yeah. yeah. I you will have, not lose. You have an intense work ethic. Like, it literally yeah. doesn't matter. I. It will be three in the morning and he'll be like, I'm shooting this He's off. He's a boss. You're you know? your, are you and that's just, that's how you operate. And I think that is confusing to a lot of people yeah. because you're general disposition like as a friend or if you're just hanging yeah. out with you chill. it is really chill and it's really chill, yeah. easy going and you're very you're holding sweet. the bomb you know yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're yeah, holding yeah, the bomb yeah. and all of a sudden you go yeah. from holding the bomb to be like you know yeah. you, you have that yeah, yeah. yeah. he's, on People, yeah, he's yeah. like for, like you know yeah. what i mean and i'm like yeah. oh there's there's this very complex i mean everyone's even my person. brother struggles with it with me evan like evan yeah. it was like bro what's going on are you mad yeah. i'm like i'm not mad this is literally in my face at work <laughs> yeah you have resting big trees yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i got the rbf <laughs> crazy <laughs> i got the crazy <laughs> rbf yeah. uh -huh. taylor talk we're gonna have him on at some point uh -huh. he's like yo i know eddie's tight when he would walk up to me in scene with a hand behind his back <laughs> he'd be like this and he's like it's almost like you know you're about to say something so yeah. you try to take one hand behind your back yeah and he's like and then the finger comes out oh, <laughs> and sure. i'm like oh fuck and like dude do this shit like even when we'd be arguing i'd be leaning yeah what are you talking about you want to see the finger <laughs> say I'm like, damn, yeah. like what's next for you are you looking to move to the next level in the entertainment and have your own uh studio or your own you know, for you know. me, is is and look, I would love to have a production company. You're one of the most accomplished, right? you know, Asian entertainment like producers. Yeah. Thank that you, we have in this era, you know, I I'm I mean, trying. You have stuff that you pushed through this, like we touched on it earlier, like this impossible marketplace. That yeah, is, yeah. You know, so. 
So. It's been it's been hard, you know. Like I I'm always open to produce for the homies. Like I always read the homies scripts and everything. But I think and and I would love at some point to have my production company and have it funded so I can yeah. do what I want to do. Exactly. But I think right now I'm focused on becoming the best writer director I can be, oh, okay. and then worrying about the business after. Mm. Like I produce all my own stuff, mm -hmm. and like I will help anyone that wants my help. That's a friend, mm -hmm. but it's not my focus. The production side. My thing is really, you know, we have this film Tuna Melt that we're packaging. Yeah. We're gonna take out to the market. Uh -huh. That's exciting. I got Panda at Showtime. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's really cool. And you know, scripts basically accepted, and we just in a strike, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Strike going on right now. So I'm I've really been cooking and doing this show more. Yeah. But when the strike lifts, man, I, I would just love to go shoot that movie Tuna Melt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're actually not looking to the big picture. You're looking at making the best content first. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah. keep growing your craft. And then yeah. whatever comes after that comes after that. Yeah, because like you were saying, is like we all have our comfort level with ambition. Yeah. Right? My ambition right now is I really do get a lot of joy just like living my life with Natasha Mm -hmm. The dog we're about to do this family about thing. About to have a kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm realizing things like you fundamentally change as a man when you finally meet someone and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you allow yourself to love somebody truly. Yeah. Like, I was so pissed. Yeah, you've grown up a lot, bro. You really have. He really has. Wow, Not that he was a yeah immature earlier, but no, you, you, were, you, you were yeah you were angry. You were. You know, um, yeah. but you really matured a lot. Yeah. yeah, I would get angry very easily yeah. back in the day. I mm -hmm. had something to say about everyone. Yeah. I was critical. Yeah. And really what you realize is that I was critical of myself mm -hmm. and I saw the flaws in me I needed to get over yeah. to become the best version of me. And I think when I would see other people's work, I'd be like, yo, you got like, why is that guy not see that? He's got to do this so he could get to there and do mm -hmm. it. And it's like, yo, everyone's on their own journey on their own time. Yeah. And I'm sure people look at my career now or my work and are like, oh, Eddie, you should do that. Or you should do that. Me, yo, I really just, I'm in love with this novel I'm writing. I'm mm -hmm. writing a novel. Wow. And I just learned a lot of shit because of our relationship. Yeah. And coming around, like I've repaired my relationship in some ways with my parents. Mm -hmm. And we went through our own hardships. And so... I just feel full of like realizations as a man at 41 yeah. that I think kids that were troublemakers like me will yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't figure it out the way adults told me to figure it out. Yeah. I figured it out my way. But mm -hmm. in some funny way, the trick the universe pulled on me, you still end up where you was going to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like all the things my parents and teachers told me, I ended up being that guy, that person they wanted yeah. me to be. I just got through it in a different way. And you see it in people early. Like, yeah. you know, like even with yourself, like me, when I first met you, I could tell you're a good person. Yeah. You were just going through stuff, you know, yeah. and going through stuff. And whether you, probably that's how people related to you when you were younger, you know, yeah. whether you're a troublemaker or not, they knew that you had a good soul and a good spirit. So yeah. it just takes time, you know. Yeah. And I see homies now, the age I was when mm -hmm. I met you, and I see them, I'm like, yo, you just, you just figuring shit out. Yeah. I'm gonna keep mm -hmm. checking in on you. I'll yeah. see you two, three times a year, but mm -hmm. we're really not gonna be as close as we used to be until you get through this. Yeah. Cause you can't hear nothing nobody's saying mm -hmm. right now. And I think when I met you, I was just like shot out of a cannon. Mm -hmm. And while I was successful and things were happening for me, I was like, I'm still mad about this. Yeah. And I'm still mad about this. Like, hold on, I wanna talk about this. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I'm really not that mad. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> How could you be? You got a kid yeah. on the way. Yeah. 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 It, um, yeah. It's funny, like, when we're young, like, we hold on to that anger and we think that that's what defines us as, as people or different or creative or whatever. But um, there's nothing wrong with being kind and generous in this world, you yeah. know, and being okay, you know, being loving. There's enough fucking hate and anger and atrocity you know yeah. like you don't have to contribute to that to be yeah. cool you know yeah um but but like you said a lot of people got to go through that to understand it yeah you got you got to go through the shit and you have to actually feel the love in your heart yeah mm -hmm. and i think it's just like i always felt like i got a raw deal with the universe yeah until like lately and i'm <laughs> like you know what 
thank you. You blame that on Orlando, right? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, bro, I did as a kid. Yeah. I would blame Orlando, and now I look back. I'm like, yo, Orlando was ill. It was really, yeah. it it was tough to grow up in Orlando because it was such a monocultural yep. place. Even me and my friends were like mm -hmm. little troublemakers. I love my crew, but it was it was hard to be in Orlando and not fit in. Yeah, there's a lot more pressure to fit in in Orlando. Yeah, small town. Yeah. Um, I go to Disney World a lot. Oh, yeah. word? Because of yeah. the kids? Yeah, I go. I go nice. Disney World a lot. I just started on a whim. I went once, and it just ended. It ended up being a tradition. Yeah. I love it, like California Land. Oh uh, no, I go to Epcot. Epcot's my oh, favorite. Yeah. I fuck with Epcot. Yeah. Yeah. I go to Harry Potter a lot. Oh yeah, right over here. I love Harry Potter. We trying to go for. I'm the going to Universal after this. Oh, oh you today? I'm check out yeah, Nintendo yeah. World. Oh hell That's yeah, we wanna bro! Do. We want to do Nintendo World. Yeah. and there's Harry Potter. The Death Eater shit. After Dark. Now. Yeah, Harry oh, Potter. Oh, After Dark. dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some like, you know, dark. It's called the Dark Arts. Oh shit. Dude, this is perfect for you. We're literally 15 minutes I from know. Universal. I know. And like, wait, do you have the annual pass? No, I just bought a pass last yeah. night. Oh, word. Yeah. Well, bro, get don't them, let me keep you because yo, your heart out is yeah. like now. So okay. I have to say, bro, thank you so much. It's, oh, we got to get together more great. often yes. outside sure. Larchmont. Yes, been, outside yeah. Larchmont, outside yeah. of cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My yeah. man. We go way back. Yeah. Sure. Love you, bro. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. Yes. Thank you. So Pleasure nice to meet you finally. Yeah. Amazing. That's the episode. Yeah, man. This is great, Roy. Thank you.